Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's movie that I will be reviewing is the animated movie, Death of Superman. But before I get into my review, if you are enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't seen this animated movie, The Death of Superman, consider this your spoiler warning. So let's get right into the review. I'm gonna split this up to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, yes, a little bit of a Western theme, but that's basically it as far as the Western um, analogies or comparisons. So let's get right into the good. So for the good, I thought the casting for this movie was pretty amazing. There's, there's a lot of talent voicing these characters and i was pleasantly surprised when i found out who the actors were some of them are super recognizable as soon as you hear their voice you're like oh that's you know and that's what i found myself doing when i started the when the character started to get introduced to me you know uh, while watching the movie but once i looked into who was actually in the cast wow i could say like you know i was i was pleasantly surprised that this movie drew that kind of talent to be able able to voice some of these characters uh most of the time when you see animated shows or animated movies they get a few a lot of no names or not, at least not no names to us as the viewers that we would recognize them some of them are pretty big on youtube that voice over a lot of animation that we that we enjoy um but yeah i thought the cast was was amazing another good thing was the story i mean they have a great source material from the the comic book from 1997 i think the original one and then there was a remake i think in or an adaptation of it in 2007 so they they the the story was pretty much set out for them and i enjoyed the the pacing of the story and and how they told it it was a little bit slow in the beginning but most stories are in the beginning but then it started picking up and I enjoyed the way to flow. It's an hour and 25 minutes around there for the movie. But yeah, it goes really, it goes by really fast and I enjoyed every part of it. Another thing I did enjoy from this movie was the comedy. I thought the Flash's punchlines were really spot on and they got the humor from Barry pretty pretty easily or pretty uh, uh, spot on I should say and it, it played it played really good as far as it hit the right notes it was not overly done it was a nice addition to the story that they fit in these places where they would drop a joke or two like I said especially from the flash the flash in this animated series seem to be the comic relief even though green lantern was also dropped a couple lines that were pretty comical but for the most part even for when we first get introduced to to the flash in this movie uh it's in a joking kind of a way another thing i enjoyed about this movie was the drama once you start getting in the middle of the story and you see how Doomsday, you know, just completely destroys our heroes. I mean, the Justice League just doesn't stand up to, to, to Doomsday. And he's just, no matter what they do, Doomsday just has a response to it. And even when Wonder Woman was the only one besides Superman that was able to almost go toe to toe with Doomsday, I was in the edge of my seat. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> are they... even though I've read the comics, I've seen uh, several ad adaptations of this storyline, I was still like, maybe they're gonna give me a twist. Maybe they're gonna kill off another character. And it got really, really close with a lot of these characters dying in this, 
in 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 this movie but yeah i thought the drama was was top notch as far for an animated movie it, it, like i said it kept me captivated as far as the adaptation like I, like i said earlier from the comic and the previous adaptation it was it it wasn't perfect but it was damn near close as far as keeping it to the source material so i gotta give it an a a, a minus a, a, not, i can't give it an a plus because it wasn't a hundred percent but as far as like holding true to the to, to the source material i mean a minus i mean congrats you know my hats off to everyone in warner brothers animation for sticking true to the source material i mean they have a great source to go from so i wouldn't i wouldn't expect them to deviate from that great storyline another the, uh another thing that i found uh, good for from this movie was some of the voice acting i can't say all and i'm going to go into some of the not so good parts of the voice acting but for the most part i would say the voice acting was was believable it it uh it matched the characters for the most part uh as far as the dialogue that they were saying i could be like you know how when you when you see an animation and then the wrong voice comes out and it takes you out of the story there was a little bit of, of that in this show and i'll get to it in a little bit but for the most part when wonder woman spoke i was like okay that's wonder woman and I, i'm gonna you know on a little side note uh rosario dawson is the one that was voicing wonder woman and i loved her voice as wonder woman i found it enjoyable and when i found out that it was Rosa uh, rosario i was like what i'm like oh she did that so good and the way they were i mean it's pretty hard to to do voice over acting anyone that's done it to be able to you know give that attitude or that fear or the sadness and portray that through your voice and make it believable it's very very difficult i mean you see some of the behind the scenes and like you know the animated movies that come out and even not just the animated with now the cgi being a, a huge part of hollywood it's really really hard but i i found it believable for the most part throughout this whole movie so let's get on to the bad I don't have a lot of bad, but the only thing that I could say was pretty bad was Lex Luthor. Now, not not anything as far as the animation with Lex Luthor. I did not like the voice actor voicing the, the Lex Luthor. And I didn't know. I mean, I did know when I heard him, but I didn't believe it. I was like, no, I can't be because I just didn't believe that he could... He did voice acting. I didn't even know he did voice acting. But when I found out that it was him, I was like, oh man. It's the one of our favorites from The Office. Rain Wilson was voicing Lex Luthor. And it didn't, it didn't go well. It, it didn't sound good. It was too high pitch. And I, I get that in the live action DCU universe, we had the, the younger Lex Luthor that had that high pitch voice. But when I think of Lex, I think of a real deep voice. Not that Rain Wilson isn't a man, but just a, a deeper voice to voice Lex would have would have done it better for me. The way that Rain Wilson sounds would be much, much better as for like someone like the Riddler or, and hear me out on this, I think he will make a great Joker. Voicing the voicing the voice of Joker in an animated series or movie, I think he he will be perfect for either one of those two characters. As far as Lex Luthor, I just I just couldn't. It just it took me out every time he spoke, and even towards the end when Doomsday's like tearing up his 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 uh his armor from Lex Luthor's uh you know suit or Iron Man suit, I guess <laughs> in a way that I could put it. He was doing like, you know, oh no, no, and stuff like that. And it, it just took me off as opposed to like letting me understand or, or la letting me feel his uh, despair or his terror. I didn't, I was just like, dude, that voice, that voice. Every time he spoke, all I kept on thinking that voice doesn't fit, that voice doesn't fit. And that's one of the, the tricky parts with animation if the voice the voice acting doesn't work it could take you right out of the movie now let's get into the ugly 
so for the ugly, the animation was probably the most the the, the biggest thing you, you you recognize from this. Um, it wasn't consistent throughout the whole movie, uh, even with the muscle tone, the the way their muscles work. You know, was like ridiculous. Some of the traps on on Superman were huge. I mean, it was like almost the whole size of their neck, and and it kept on fluctuating. And then when Superman went into Clark Kent, he for whatever reason got smaller, and so it was just inconsistencies with the animation, and not just with Superman, with all the characters, and some of the backdrops kept on changing their faces. But def but specifically with Superman, the one thing that was glaring was his eyes. In some shots, it was it, they were really wide apart, and he looked like an alien. And in other ones, they were really close together, and it just kept on going from wide eye to close eyes. And so that inconsistency was always like, oh, you know, there's an error, there's an error, and and it just the animation, even though it, it was great, I enjoyed it. But the way they were walking like across the street, it, it, it seemed just, I don't know, I don't want to call it lazy because to, to produce something like this, it takes a lot of talent, a lot of time. And I don't want to put anyone down because I did completely enjoy this movie. Um, but the animation was just the, the big, the ugliest thing about this movie, that it wasn't consistent. Um, and even in the action shots and the whole thing, maybe it was and a little bit with the voice, with, with the mouths moving, it didn't fit well with the syllables or the way they were going. Some of the words, the sentences were a little bit longer and you would see the mouth closed. So some, so yeah, some of that, the animation was, like I said, the, probably the most ugliest part about this movie and some of the other voice acting. I said earlier, it was a good, some of the, the, one of the good parts of this movie was the voice acting, but some of the ugly parts also were the voice acting. Um, in some scenes, the way they were delivering the lines was, there was too much pausing in between, especially when Lewis Lane was talking, interacting with anyone. I don't know if she was the only one in the room, if they did it, you know, uh, individually, and then they put the, the words, the, the, the dialogue together. But when Lewis Lane was talking, there was all these pausing, like, hey, da -da -da -da. It, then, then there will be a response. I don't know if there was, they, they couldn't edit it just because of how the animation worked. But yeah, some of the voice acting was not, not, not top tier in i would say 50 50 50 was good 50 was bad so or 50 was ugly those are the two, two things that were just the ugliest the uglier part of this movie but all in all i give this movie a 9 out of 10. i would highly recommend anyone that's a dc fan a a superman fan if you read the comic in in the, in the 90s the late 90s uh the death of superman you will enjoy this um, this movie and not it's not really ugly but before I let you guys go it's not really ugly but it wasn't really my favorite part and I'm sure it's because of the whole Marvel thing but there was like three or four I think end credits I think three of them were end credits uh, one you know at, uh, at the end of this movie which I found kind of cheesy and tacky because they were like some of them were like super quick and then it, it cut to black and then it had more of the credits like uh, of who worked on the on the movie the only one that really worked was the one that was all the way at the last that gives us a teaser into the in the next uh animated movie that follows this one which i enjoyed that part but it was a little bit too cheesy for me but hey just a little nitpick i highly recommend this movie if you have some time it is showing on hbo max and I'm sure there's other places you could download it or buy it. So yeah, go out and check it out. Um, and like always, that's a wrap.